Hello, today we're going to talk about structure 3.1.6, which is all about oxid oxidation states. Okay, so oxidation number is also called oxidation state, and you can use those interchangeably for the IB test. Um, it shows the number of electrons transferred when forming a bond. So it's not always the same thing as a charge, although it can be, uh, but it is the number of electrons um, involved in forming a bond. And there are a few tricks to figuring out the oxidation state for any element um, very quickly. And the uh, first and easiest one really are the elements that are by themselves in their standard state. So if you have, um, let's say, oxygen gas, or if you have solid sodium, their oxidation numbers are going to be zero. Okay. So elements in their standard state have an oxidation number of zero. Monatomic ions, so if I have something like sodium chloride, okay, that consists of two ions, sodium ion and chloride ion. Those are both monatomic ions, monatomic, so single atom ions their oxidation number will be the same as their charge. So this one will be plus one, and this will be minus one. We always write the sign and then the number, all right? Um, and then I want to distinguish, let's say, let's do another one. If I have magnesium chloride, I'm going to form magnesium, which is two plus and two chlorides minus one. So the oxidation state of magnesium is plus two. Chlorine is minus one. So notice how the difference between charge, which is the number and then the sign, and oxidation number, which is the sign and then the number. Um, after I've checked for elements by themselves and monatomic ions, the next thing I want to check for is um, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen in a compound is negative two, except for peroxides. peroxides, so things like hydrogen peroxide, right? We can use some context clues from the hydrogen there um, to be able to realize that the oxygen is not behaving how it normally would. Um, so hydrogen is typically a plus one, and um, oxygen is normally minus two, right? But it, in order for this to balance out perfectly, if this is plus two, this one has to add up to minus two. So each oxygen is negative one. So in peroxides, oxygen is negative one instead of negative two. And then for hydrogens, almost always it's going to be plus one in a compound, um, just like we saw on hydrogen peroxide there. The only exception for hydrogen are metal hydrides. That's where you have a metal, like sodium, attached to hydrogen. Um, and because that metal is going to have the same as the charge on the monatomic ion, the hydrogen will be negative one to cancel that out. Um, another example would be magnesium hydride, where if this is plus one, this is, I'm sorry, this is plus two, and this one would be minus one, but there's two of them to cancel it out. Finally, um, and I've kind of previewed that already, but if there's any other elements, you need to get it to add up to the overall charge in the compound. Um, so if I have an example like um, H2SO4, okay, hydrogen in a compound is plus one, unless it's a metal hydride, which it's not with a metal here. Oxygen is negative two, unless it's a peroxide, which it's not here. So then all of these, all of the oxidation numbers have to make sure to add up to zero because there's a zero charge on the overall compound. So that means the positive two from the hydrogen, because there's two of them, plus whatever the sulfur is, plus the negative eight from the four oxygens has to add up to zero. The only thing that makes that true is sulfur being six. And so that's how you would figure out the other element if there are any. And if you have an ion, it would just add up to whatever the charge is on the ion. Um, in 
instead of zero. Okay, so let's talk about oxidized versus reduced. Um, oxidation is when something is losing electrons. And so um, we use oil, oxidation is losing as our acronym there. And then reduction is when something is gaining electrons. And so we use um, RIG, reduction is gaining as our acronym. Um, so if it's losing electrons, getting rid of electrons, it's becoming more positive more positive. So that means its oxidation state is increasing. If you're gaining electrons, you're getting more negative. If it's going more negative, that means your oxidation number must be decreasing. So let's look at a, um, a redox reaction. If I have something like um, copper plus sodium chloride is going to form um, sodium plus copper one chloride. A okay, very simple one. Um, let's look at their oxidation states. Copper's by itself, so it's zero. Sodium's by itself, so it's zero. Um, monatomic ions in our ionic compound, so this is plus one, minus one, minus one. The copper must be plus one here because um, it's a transition metal, so I need to use what it's attached to. So that means the copper is going from zero to plus one. Its oxidation number is increasing. It was oxidized in that reaction. The sodium is going from plus one to zero. It's going down. It was reduced in this reaction. And the chlorine did not change. Um, so that's how we can use oxidation numbers to figure out what was oxidized and what was reduced. If none of the oxidation numbers change, then it was not a redox reaction. OK, we can also have something called complex ions. Complex ions is typically when you have a um, transition metal forming bonds with ligands. Ligands can be a single element, but they can also be um, groups of elements together. Some really common ligands are water, um, cyanide, which is a negative charge, um, just chlorine, just a single ion. And so when those things attach to a transition metal, it can make what we call a complex ion. So I'm going to give you an example here. If I have iron, iron can attach to six cyanide ions. And the overall charge is negative four. So in order to find the oxidation state of the iron, I need to use the six cyanides. Each cyanide has a charge of negative one. So the whole compound is negative one. And that means whatever the iron is, plus negative six from the cyanides, has to add up to negative four overall. So that means the iron here must be plus two. And so the oxidation state of this iron is plus two. And that's how you figure out oxidation state for complex ions. Um, oh, here's another ligand you should know is um, ammonia. Ammonia is also neutral. So water and ammonia are neutral, no charge. Cyanide and chlorine, of course, chlorine, um, but negative one for those. Okay, so let's review our rules for naming ionic compounds. Um, if you have, um, let's say, a simple one, let's do um, Al2O3. The metal, the name of the metal goes first, so aluminum or aluminum. Um, and the nonmetal, you change the ending to ide, so aluminum oxide, and you're done. Because they're ionic, it does not matter how many of each you have, in this case, you can always figure out the ratio of um, based on the charges of aluminum and oxide. But if you have a transition metal, it becomes a little more difficult. So if I have something like um, FeCl3, okay, I know it's iron and I know it's chloride, you still change the ending to ide, um, but I need to use the charge on the nonmetal to figure out the charge on the transition metal. So since chlorine is negative one, and there's three of them, the iron must be positive three. So we'll use that oxidation state of plus three to name the ionic compound. So it's iron three chloride. And we use Roman numerals to indicate the oxidation state. You could also have things with polyatomic ions. So um, 
let's see. Let's do like um Cu OH2. So Cu is copper, and OH is our polyatomic ion hydroxide. Hydroxide has a negative one charge overall, and there's two of them, so the oxidation state um, on copper must be plus two to cancel that out. So we would say copper two hydroxide using Roman numerals. You can have two polyatomics together forming an ionic compound. So something like um, NH4CO3, like this. NH4 is ammonium, and CO3 is carbonate. So you just give the names of those two things. Um, again, you only need that Roman numeral if it is a transition metal. Now we talked a little bit about um, polyatomic ions, but I want to point out the oxy anions, so negative ions that have an oxygen in them. Um, so we can have something like uh, NO3, that's nitrate. If I remove an oxygen, it becomes NO2, um, that we change the ending to it, and that is a common usage name. Um, so another example would be if I have SO4, two negative, that's sulfate. If I take away an oxygen, that's sulfite. Now, um, those are, again, the common names for them. You could also use their um, oxidation state to name those oxyanions. So this would be called nitrate 5, with the Roman numeral 5, because this nitrogen has an oxidation state of plus 5. The other one, NO2 minus, we can call that nitrate three. So we don't change the ending, but we indicate that the oxidation number on the nitrogen has now plus three. Same idea with sulfate. This one is sulfate six, whereas this one here is sulfate four, because this one has a plus six oxidation state versus a plus four oxidation state. And you should know both of those naming conventions. Okay, so for this example question, we need to determine the oxidation state of vanadium in each of the following. Um, so this one, oxygen is negative two in compounds, and we need it to be positive two overall. So the vanadium must be plus four to get to cancel out the oxygen and wind up being plus two overall. In our Complex ion here, remember water is neutral overall. So you know, zero times six is still zero. That means the vanadium must be supplying all of that plus three. So plus three oxidation state for vanadium. And then in this case, this is just an ionic compound. Um, so it's got to add up to zero. Oxygen is negative two. Um, so that's negative 10 total. The two vanadiums have to add up to positive 10. Each one is positive five. And so you can see those different oxidation states for that transition metal vanadium. Okay, the common and IUPAC names for the compound Cr2SO33. Um, so chromium is our transition metal there, chromium. And um, sulfite uh, is the common name for that polyatomic ion. And because sulfate has an overall charge of negative two, and there's three of them, the chromite, chromiums have to add up to positive six. So each one is plus three. So there's our common name, chromium three sulfate. You could also call it oops, chromium three sulfate um, four, because the um, sulfate ion has a sulfur, which it um, has an oxidation state of four instead. So we could say sulfate four. Um, so both of those work for um, naming. And so this really links in to reactivity 3.2. How can oxidation states be used to analyze redox reactions? Um, we know that if the oxidation number of an element is increasing, that thing must have been oxidized or it must have lost electrons. 
and if the oxidation number was decreasing, it must have been reduced or gained electrons in the reaction. Um, so this is going to be really important when we get to electrochemistry.